Hi, this is Tom Sedlak, General Manager at 33rd Company Property Management. Thanks so much for watching this video podcast. Today's topic is how to deal with HOA violations. You know, a lot of people live in homeowner associations now, and in fact, many are volunteers uh, on their boards, as boards of directors, as members at large, and whatnot. And dealing with the occasional violation of an HOA rule and reg from the governing doc is, is a fact of life. Rules and regs, in fact, should be very specific and fines well articulated. Uh, many times uh, the HOAs write poorly crafted fine structures or poorly crafted rules that allow for exceptions, or they're, they're not specific and they're difficult to enforce, they're difficult to quantify or prove, and, and those are things that the board has to reconcile with. You want to be very specific and very precise in your language when you are writing rules, especially, for instance, with pets, uh, with the requirements for pets, or with parking trailers on the driveway, or those sorts of things, you have to be very specific. How long is, uh, is a um, conduct allowed to occur? Uh, what are the specifics or the parameters that have to be followed with regard to pets, for instance? And it's important that the board very clearly articulate what the rules are and get general consensus from the constituency. Generally at the annual meeting, it's best, obviously, to, to vote for changes to your rules and regs, but it, it really boils down to what your, your governing docs say, your declarations say, in terms of how to create uh, additional rules and regs. But having broad consensus is always the first step in making sure that you have buy-in from all of your members with regard to the rules. And then as far as the fines go, you want to consider an escalating fine structure. Those are typically the best uh, fine structures for accommodating uh, violations. And the reason is because if you have a simple fine of $25 for a pet violation, once that violation has been paid, it uh, they've already occurred the fine and and now they could remain in default and remain with an illegal pet or an unauthorized pet and they're only going to get a $25 fine and then they're done or maybe that's a $25 fine per month and maybe they're willing to pay that just to have their non-complying animal live in the home with them uh, so you have to have an escalating fine structure you have to have something that works for the individual that made an honest oops and will comply once they're notified versus the individual that's going to be recalcitrant and wants to hold on to that pet regardless and simply pay the fine. And so by escalating fine structure in the case of the pet, one example is to have a $100 fine, uh, which for the first occurrence doubles for the second occurrence, doubles again for the third occurrence, uh, and then there are other meaningful uh, penalties beyond that. And then that way you have a deep uh, fine structure that will find its own level depending on the uh, degree that the individual wishes to remain non-compliant and eventually they're going to get to a pain point and then they're going to ultimately capitulate and, and comply and so people are all different uh, some are honest as, as can be and, and make in, innocent mistakes and others simply want to skirt the rules and, uh, and not play by the rules and so having an escalating fine structure will help you find uh, that even ground for all of the individuals in your uh, HOA membership. When you are uh, articulating a, a violation to an individual member, always reference the specific governing docs for where that, uh, that violation is, is stemming from. Whether it's the declaration, whether it's the bylaws, rules and regs, uh, you want to make sure that you're specifically referencing it so the homeowner knows uh, what exactly the rules are and what exactly needs to be done in order to correct uh, the violation. Posting your governing docs onto an owner portal is always considered a best practice because then you always have the latest version of the governing docs on a ready access portal and you can simply reference your portal and tell the member to go visit the latest version of the governing docs uh, to uh, see the specific paragraph uh, for which they're non-compliant. Uh, when you are collecting fines for a violation, always apply any payments you receive from a member to the fines first, and, and then any balance goes to uh, the member dues or, or to uh, assessments. And the reason you want to do this is because when you are uh, having an aggregation of fines that causes a financial delinquency, the best way to correct a financial delinquency is to pursue it uh, as a delinquent member dues. And this allows you to put liens on the property, it allows you to uh, pursue uh, the financial delinquency per the state laws uh, with regard to
to uh, homeowner associations, and that could include liens, it could include collections, it could include uh, court judgments uh, in conciliation court uh, for uh, those unpaid member dues. So it's always much easier to, to collect and pursue collections for member dues than it would be, for instance, for a standalone uh, pet fine that is in dispute. Um, it's also best not to disclose the name of the individual that is being fined in any public documents. And this would include minutes, newsletters, or any other member correspondence. You don't want to publicly poke a stick at the individual that's non-compliant, uh, but you do want to indicate that there are violations that are open-ended and are being pursued, and I think just leave it at that. And the reason would be that you don't want to open the door to harassment or ridicule by other members of the board, unlikely, but but probably more likely would be other individuals that aren't familiar with how a board runs or operates or the risks uh, that the association faces. Um, and so individual members or a neighbor could uh, openly harass or ridicule the individual, and that could cause either a, a disparate impact uh, violation uh, or it could uh, just upset the harmony of your association uh, more likely. Also make sure that fines are applied equally. Uh, if the rules say X, then you need to enforce X. You don't want disparate impact for a fair housing complaint for allowing one pet versus another, neither of which are uh, compliant with the rules. You're simply opening the door for a multitude of complaints and litigation, uh, and that's not uh, a good practice. Fines can be written for any non-compliance, so typically boards uh, will put in fines for violation of their uh, rules and regs. Uh, many times, though, uh, associations only put fines for specific events. For instance, uh, a fine specific to a pet violation or a fine specific to an architectural control issue or a parking fine, etc. Um, those are great to have individual fines that are specific to the nature of the violation. However, it, you just don't don't know what can happen on a day-to-day -day basis and it's good to have an all-encompassing fine structure for any material violation of the rules and regs or the bylaws or the declarations so that you have some uh, power and some strength to uh, enforce all of those additional rules. So make sure that you do have some sweeping overarching fine uh, that is available uh, for any material violation and your uh, HOA will certainly be better for it uh, and you'll be more able to uh, control delinquent behavior of some of your members. Lastly, I would make sure that you have your uh, rules and regs and your bylaws or any changes uh, to your bylaws and rules and regs reviewed by an attorney. And, and actually just as important is have them reviewed as well by an experienced HOA manager. An HOA manager, a good one, can help you craft appropriate rules and associated fines based on experience. The attorney can certainly uh, bless them as legal in the eyes of the state, uh, but uh, actually crafting uh, the rules themselves in many cases are uh, best done by the HOA, experienced HOA managers themselves, and then it's simply a, a matter of uh, having the attorney bless them for compliance with state laws. That way you're going to get the best outcome. You're going to get an experienced uh, a draft of your violations and they're going to be uh, better, they're going to stick better, and they're going to be more enforceable and they're also going to have an escalating fine structure that's actually going to make, make them work and make people comply. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, it's never fun dealing with HOA violations, but do it fairly, do it consistently, and uh, and also follow the rules and regs, and I think you'll, uh, you'll do very well. Thanks so much for listening. If you need help at all with uh, managing your homeowners association, feel free to give 33rd Company a call. Uh, we'd love to help you. Thanks so much.